Praise the Lord, beloved. What a joy it is to welcome you to another moment of empowerment by the word and quickening by the spirit. Oh, what a joy it is to be alive on this glorious day. We thank God for giving us another opportunity to bring God's word to you right where you are. God has you on his mind. We have been seeking the face of the Lord concerning this year and God has spoken good concerning us. God has given us a word in season. In fact, right ahead of time, I want you to know that this will be a year of greater glory for you because the word of God came to us expressly in Haggai chapter 2 and verse number 9. He said, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. It doesn't matter what level of glory you have seen in the time past. God says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. So I want you to get ready and begin to expect the best of God. In fact, a new you is emerging this year. Something brand new, what you have never seen before, because this is your time to experience the greater glory of God. I'm not alone. God, God has given me a wonderful partner my wife and we have together we have been seeking God's face and I know that if two of us shall agree on earth as touching anything we shall ask it shall be done there's power in unity so on this very first live broadcast today I have my beloved wife with me and together we shall be bringing you God's word help me to welcome the woman of God at this hour praise the Lord beloved what a joy it is to join God's prophet my beloved husband to bring you this word from the Lord I want you to get your phone Call your friend, call your neighbor. I tell you, God has a word for you today. The Bible says, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Beloved, every time we gather, there are always wondrous things to behold from the word of God. And I know that today you will behold wonder in the name of Jesus. Get excited and be ready because God will be speaking to you. Amen. My God, it is the wonder you behold from the word of God that makes you a wonder to your world. And God has given us a word that will set the pace for this year. I have a word quickened in my spirit from Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 1. The word of God says, Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I want you to know that there is a race set before you this year. It's a glorious race. It's a race of life. And I want to begin to prophesy ahead of time that you will run your race to the end. You will get to the finish line. You will not quit. You will not stop halfway. The scripture says, I want you to picture yourself in, in a live stadium today. I mean, this year because there's a race that God has said before. He said, wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. There are a cloud of witnesses to cheer you up. The fact that you are alive is a witness because God has kept you alive because God is not done with you yet. And the word of God also is prompting in your spirit right now that there is a witness. The word of God you are hearing is a witness because he said, I know the thought that I think towards you. They are the thought of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope, to give you an expected end. So that should be a witness in your spirit in this race that you are engaged in. It's a glorious race and I know you will run the race well. He said, let us run the race that is set before us. You need to begin to run. It is only runners that will obtain. So in this race, you must make up your mind to run. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't stop. You know, some start a race, but not many finish the race. He said, let us run the race that is still before us. Don't sit with the race. Run with the race. In any race, it is only the runners that receive and obtain prizes. It is only the runners that obtain. Spectators don't obtain anything. So don't be a spectator in the race of life this year. Be a full participator. Get your spirit. Get your mind. Get everything involved because this is the year that God has made for you. This year, great things are going to happen in your life. So begin to run. In fact, even officials in a race don't receive any prize. They don't That's obtain. Right. It is only the runners that obtain. So this year you must make up your mind that you are going to run and you need to run with a purpose. Run to obtain. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24, it says in a race, it is, it is only the, those that run that will obtain. So run that you may obtain. Look at that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. What does the word say, woman of God? Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. 
one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. Be involved in this race. Run to obtain. Don't just run for the fun of it. Run to obtain. Because in a race, everyone that run it receiveth the prize. How do you run to obtain? Because if you are involved in this race, you must run to obtain. We're going to be showing you step by step. We're going to look into this one because it is so loaded. It is so powerful. I want your spirit to be engaged. I want your mind to be engaged. How do you run to obtain? In Habakkuk chapter number 2 and verse number 2, the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain that he may run that read it. In order to run to obtain, you must run with a purpose. You must run with a goal. You must run with a vision. You need a vision in order to obtain, in order to run to obtain. And how do you get vision? You get vision from the Lord in the place of prayer. You get vision by seeking the face of the Lord. Like I said, we have been seeking the face of God. And God has spoken expressly concerning this year. It's never too late to start. It's never too late to seek the face of God. You can go before God right now and begin to seek a vision. Seek a purpose for this race. Don't just begin to run purposelessly. Run with a purpose. Run with a goal. Run to obtain. You need a vision. And that comes from God. We'll be back to continue this message after this break. We are inviting you to come join the man of God for our life-changing worship services. We are conveniently located at 2435 Dixie Avenue in Smyrna, Georgia, off of Windy Hill. We have two powerful services on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. and our second service is at 11.15 a.m. Our Wednesday miracle service and Bible study is at 7.30 p.m. And thank God for Friday because we have our intercessory prayer meeting at 7.30 p.m. We'll see you there in Jesus' name. Welcome back. God has spoken good concerning us. God has given us a word in this year. We're looking at Hebrews chapter number 12 and from verse number 1. The scripture says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There is a race set before you. I want you to know that if you must obtain, you don't just run any race. You need to run the race that is set before you. I want you, that is very powerful. It's not the race that you set before yourself. It's the race that is set before you. Because there's a difference between the race that you set for yourself and the race that is set before you. The race that you set for yourself is an ambition. But the race that is set before you is the race that is a vision. That is what you get from God. You know, nobody ever sets an exam and scores himself and afford, I mean, and award himself a degree. You need to cooperate with the examiner. So God is saying, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So you need a vision this year, a clear cut vision, a goal concerning your year, concerning your life. What is God's plan for you? You need to seek the face of the Lord. And I said, it's not too late to seek the face of God. Some people have started early in the, uh, in the part of the year, but you can still seek God's face because it is not how far you have gone, but how well and how good you are running, how effective you are running on the race. You need to get a vision because vision only comes from God. The race that is set before you is the vision that God has for you. Before you came on the, onto this earth, before you came here, God said, I have a plan for you. I have ordained you for the purpose. God has kept you here because God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. He has a plan for your job. He has a plan for your family. He has a plan for your relationship. He has a plan for your children. He has something he wants you to accomplish in life. So you need to be able to seek God's face, to be able to take delivery of vision. You know, a lot of people run with ambition. There is difference between ambition and vision. Ambition is the race that you set before yourself, but vision is what you get from God. But once you get a vision from God, then you can begin to run the race that is set before you. And it says, let us run the race that is set before us. How do you get vision? You get vision in the place of prayer. That was why we looked at that scripture, Habakkuk chapter 2. He said, I will stand upon my watch to see what he will say unto me and what I will respond, what I, what I shall answer when he speak. And the Lord says what in Habakkuk 2, 2? Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Write the vision. Make it plain that he may run. Until the vision is plain, you can't run with it. Why do you need vision? Vision helps you to stay focused. Vision helps to keep you on track. Vision keeps you from distraction. Vision helps you to stay on your own lane. Because without vision, you might veer off and enter into somebody else's lane and begin to run somebody else's race. Meanwhile, there's a race that is set before you. So you need a vision so that you can stay on track, so that you can run the race that is set before you. I want you to know that this year, you need 
doing everything on the inside of you to cooperate with God's plan for your life. This is not one race that you will quit. This is not one race that you will veer off. This is not one race you will give up on. This is one race that I believe that God will give you the race, the grace to run it to the end. Because the race that is set before you is a race that you must finish. He said, let us lay aside every weight of sin which does easily beset us. As you run this race, there are some things that you must set aside in order to be able to obtain. There are some things you must set aside. The weight, whenever you are running the race and there are weights on your shoulder, you can't effectively run the race. What are these weights? It might be your past. Your past can be a weight. There are some things that happened in the past year. The past is past. There is nothing you can do about the past. Your past failures, your past defeat, your past trials, your past pain. Drop them on the side. Lay aside every weight that, that is on your shoulder. Cast them at the, at the feet of the master. You know, Jesus is the burden bearer. Right. He says, cast your cares upon the Lord for he cared for you. Amen. So you need to be able to cast your cares upon the Lord. Lay those burdens down at the feet of the master. Call upon him. Let him take it. He said, Call on, come on to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. Because in this race, you can't afford to run the race with weight on your shoulder. You can't afford to run this race with burdens on your shoulder. So let us lay aside every weight that does is every weight and the sin which does easily beset us. There are weights and there is also sin. Mm. Sin will not allow you to run this race effectively. Mm. When there is sin in your life, it will hinder you. The Bible says in this in the scripture, we read that uh, sin is a reproach. Sin is a hindrance. Mm. Sin is missing the mark. Mm. Whatever will make you miss the mark because whatever wants to wants to make you to miss the mark is trying to stop you. And the sin that you don't stop today will eventually stop you tomorrow. Mm. But my prayer for you is that sin will not stop you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This year you will not miss the mark. Amen. I know that our time is running out. We shall be continuing this message again next week by the grace of God. But before we go, I want to be able to pray for you so that you can run this race, so that you can receive a vision, a clear cut vision of what God has on his mind for you. This year, in the name of Jesus. And whatever weight that is on your life, I see God ruling them away at this hour. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up your people before you right now. We pray for this vessel in the mighty name of Jesus. That whatever it is, oh God, that is the vision for their life. Let it be clear. Let it be open. I pray for grace for this one to tarry in the place of prayer. To seek your face right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And if there be any weight of the past, past failure, past mistakes, I command that they be rolled away in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for a new beginning for this one. If there be any sin that does easily beset you, I prophesy grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Give us a call. Let us agree with you in prayer. God has you on his mind. Until we come your way again next week, we want you to remember that Jesus is Lord. Where do I go? There's no